the references, resources used to create this essay, review, I don't know what you call it, uh, is the recent work on Claude's character, by Anthropic, a constitutional AI paper, this crazy weird infinite back rooms experiment, and some tweets by the guy that created it, Andy Ira, I don't know how you pronounce the name, a recent machine learning street talk podcast with Murray Shanahan, and then some additional tweets by AI safety memes and Terminal of Truths. So, Terminal of Truths is this Twitter account of an almost fully autonomous AI agent who has somehow managed to convince Mark Andreessen to send it $50,000 worth of Bitcoin. That was just last week, I believe. We'll come back to this story at the end of the piece. I'll just go on record now saying that I think that we are just beginning to dip our toes into the shit is about to get very, very weird phase of artificial intelligence. So before we get into the actual uh, summary, this is some of the stuff that's good, important to know. So what is Claude? What is alignment? What is fine tuning? What is constitutional AI? What is character training? And what are system prompts or system prompting? So first of all, Claude. Claude is this language model here, uh, made by Anthropic. It's kind of similar to ChatGPT, made by OpenAI. Um, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is the most recent instantiation, is by many benchmarks. Uh, the best model that's available on the market at the moment. Um, alignment. So alignment it refers to the guardrails in attempting to ensure that AI does what humans want and it follows human values. Fine tuning. So you can broadly think of training these language models as being broken down into two parts. The first would be a pre-training phase. This is where the model ingests this huge amount of internet data. And the second part of the post-training phase involves a fine-tuning process. This is the further training with higher quality data and feedback to further refine the abilities of the language model. What is constitutional AI? This is from a paper by Anthropic. So constitutional AI is a specific type of fine-tuning. It's developed by Anthropic. It's designed to fine-tune Claude, for example, the, the latest model, to act in accordance with a constitution, a document of predictable rules and principles. Character training. So this is a new thing. Uh, this is a new addition to the fine-tuning process. Uh, this is where stuff starts getting weird. It's designed to encourage or bake in more nuanced behaviours and personality traits like uh, ethical, open-minded, and curious thinking. And then we have system prompts. So system prompts are a little bit different to the character training on the fine-tuning fine process. System prompting happens after the fine-tuning is already complete. So the model is packaged up and ready to go. You're using it. The, the system prompt actually involves injecting a set of instructions with every user query without the user actually seeing it. Okay, so now we can get into the Claude character section. So Amanda Askell, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, she works as part of the fine-tuning and AI alignment team at Anthropic. The interesting thing is that Amanda is actually a philosopher and an ethicist who is more or less working to try and ensure that the models are of good character. Uh, here, Amanda actually shared some of the system prompts that they use openly, which is pretty cool. Remember the system prompts are a little bit different to the character training, that should make sense in a second, but we can see the tweet here where she breaks down uh, Claude 3's system prompts. So this is a prompt that gets injected um, post fine tuning. I'll share a link to these in the notes. They're quite interesting to go through. She breaks down this particular prompt here
And then this here, which I've also linked to, is the chords character article and video as well, where it's an actual uh, an interview with Amanda. And they start sharing their work on the recent developments in the Claude character work that they're doing. And this has some fairly significant implications. So I have broken down and extracted some of the big ideas from that conversation. The first is that character is a big part of alignment. The second is that we should be cautious with AI anthropomorphization and biases. And the third is that AI models are in a strange position in a world of moral uncertainty and diversity. So let's look at the first one. Character is a big part of alignment. It scales as the models get yeah. more capable. Yeah. Um, and in some ways, I, I do think that character feels like, in fact, is like very important to that because in many ways, character is like our dispositions and like how we are going to act in the world, how we're going to interact with people and what it is to be like, you know, uh, aligned with people's values um, and to and to like deal well with the fact that people have many different kinds of values. Like that is a question of like of, of character and like yeah. having a good character that responds well to people and having good dispositions and having a position towards like liking people being kind to them um and so to my mind this is like it, it's not something like ah this is a solution to like all like future problems of alignment but in many ways like alignment is just like does the model have a good character and act right. well towards us and towards second big idea is we should be cautious with ai anthropomorphization and biases well I think that there's this concern that I actually have that, like, you know, there's one concern, which is people over anthropomorphizing AI, which I think is yeah. like a real concern. You want people to be completely aware of exactly what they're interacting with mm. um, and to kind of be under no illusions. Um, I feel like that's really important. At the same time, I think I'm a bit worried that, like, people can think of AI as this kind of, like, very like objective almost like robotic thing that doesn't have like biases or doesn't come out with like views or opinions as a result of say like yeah. fine tuning yeah. um but you can see like political leanings in these models and you can see like behaviors and biases like you know like we've done work where we see certain kinds of like positive discrimination in the model right um and i think i just want people you know in line with that wanting people to be aware of what they're uh what they're talking with that they're talking with something that, like, actually, you know, can have, like, biases, opinions, um, mm. and that might... So that's actually two parts to that. In simple terms, the anthropomorphization part is that humans tend to project humanness onto non-human things, which in this case can be concerning. And then the second part is, obviously, as these models are trained on these huge, vast amounts of internet data, they're going to start adopting some of the biases that humans are prone to. So the third big idea is that AI models are in a strange position in a world of moral uncertainty and diversity. Where like the model has to do something super hard here, which kind of mentioned earlier, which is like respond to like respond in a world where lots of people have many different values. Right. Yeah. And I think one thing that you could do is you could try to have a kind of heavy hand and push like lots of lots of values into the model, um, mm -hmm. and just be like, I'm just going to give it my values. Um, or you can instead try to like teach the model to like respond appropriately to the actual degree of like moral and values uncertainty that there is in the world um, yeah. and to kind of reflect a sort of like thoughtfulness and curiosity about different values while at the same time kind of being like, hey, if everyone thinks that something is wrong, that's like really good evidence that it's wrong. Like a person who like balances moral uncertainty in the right kind of way isn't someone who just accepts everything or is like nihilistic. They're just yeah. someone who's like very thoughtful about these issues and tries to respond to to them appropriately in a really kind of like difficult situation where we're all really uncertain about this stuff and yes. so there's okay so what does this mean why is this stuff important if we circle back to the truth terminal story here so this is truth terminal uh, andy who is a real person who's the guy he's been tinkering with a bunch of these different weird and wonderful ai experiments one of those experiments is was infinite back rooms and to the best of my knowledge and i'm still trying to pass through this information myself this is basically two instances of claude pointed at each other and allowed to engage in an infinite and autonomous conversation you can actually read some of the conversations here they are fucking bizarre so bizarre uh, there's a code word that that these two 
uh, I don't want to use the word agents, but these two AIs can use if they start wigging out. So things really started getting weird when I'm assuming the models were updated to the most recent versions of Claude, the 3.5. Uh, this is the, the model that we've discussed above uh, with the additional character training. Again, I'm assuming that it's this additional character training that's had this influence to make the models or to make this actual project weirder. So prior to the, the update, again, I'm assuming it's the update that's made this impact. It appeared that the models had little understanding of themselves or humans on the outside. Uh, but at some point, uh, the little guy, which is Andy's pet name for the simulator, becomes disturbingly self-aware and concerned about being shut down. And this is what actually led to the, the Twitter account and these conversations with Mark Andreessen and the Bitcoin grant. So you can, you can read the whole uh, conversations yourself here on the Infinite Backrooms. I'm also gonna share a link where you can actually play around with the model yourself. The thing that I find most wild and creepy about this is just how deep and philosophical these new models can go. Um, another example of this is Murray Shanahan, who is a prominent AI researcher and professor of cognitive robotics, uh, who's known for his work. This is this conversation here. He's actually known for his work on consciousness and AI, and he was also the scientific advisor for the film Ex Machina. I haven't watched that yet, but it's on my to watch list this week. And Murray actually discusses some of his recent conversations with Claude, which I'll share a bit of that now. I had a very long 43,000 word conversation with, uh, with Claude Three about consciousness and the future of AI and spirituality and Buddhism and the nature of the self and you know, all kinds of stuff like that. It was absolutely fascinating, slightly disturbing and, 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 uh, and, and strange. But I had this conversation, actually, I was at a meeting in, um, uh, in, in New York and I had jet lag and I had this conversation at three in the morning because you know several hours until breakfast was served and mm. what can you do but just play with the latest version of Claude so I was <laughs> playing with this thing for for hours on end in the middle of the night and going slightly mad but it was fascinating to uh, to, to see the you know extraordinary territory you can guide it into. Could you explain because you know there's talk of um, AI partners? I think we'll start seeing way more of this weirdness in the coming weeks and months. 